Gen Con 2012. Uh, Paizo, you're behind the Paizo booth. Crazy lines as usual, but you know, not that crazy. Uh, book out today is the, ulti the Ultimate Equipment Guide, followed by the Pathfinder First Issue Release Comic Book. What are you going to be doing on Friday night? I'll be at the Ennies, taking pictures like crazy as usual. Every year at the Ennies, you are snapping your shots. That's right. I'm the pimp in the salmon shirt. <laughs> That's who I am. I'll pimp anything, even Roan. <laughs> but this is Tim Hitchcock. This is the Tim, it's the Tim Hitchcock. Inverted. Oh yeah. <laughs> turning to Blair Witch Project. You're welcome for your vomiting. I'm trying to do a hypnosis oh. on everybody. <laughs> hypnosis. So what you working on now, Tim? Um, I'm working on getting my head together. I have an event tomorrow night. I'm doing the Pathfinder special, which is pretty cool. Well, I hope it's going to be cool, because otherwise 750 people are going to be mad as hell and beat me to a pulp on the stage. 750 people? Something like that, yes. Wow. It's a pretty big event. Wow. So that, that's what they tell me. And what's your writing? Uh, um, right now I'm working on... Um, I don't know if I can say what I'm working on. I'm working on the next adventure path, the Reign of Winter adventure path. I got an adventure I'm doing for that. Uh, I got some other things I'm going to be doing for Pathfinder. It's just stuff. I have no idea what I can tell you and what I can't. All right. <laughs> so we're very happy to actually uh, be a happy couple at Gen Con for a change. What are you guys going to hit today? Um, I'm working. <laughs> As Pathfinder, am I. Pathfinder Society volunteers. Oh, right. nice. We're getting the job done. Now I heard mention that you were a gnome. I am a gnome. Show me. I don't know. She's, she's, I am gnome sized and I am a gnome. <laughs> do you not see the glitter? I do see the glitter. <laughs> Tell us about the shoes. The shoes. The shoes. My clown shoes. These were a wonderful find. Um, from a costume supply store, and uh, I wear them whenever I get the chance to be completely outrageous. Imagine Jenna Jameson meets Bozo the Clown oh, this in a crazy amalgamation yeah. of hot, sexy, and creepy all at the oh. same time. Yeah, just wait till I wear the star shoes. They're awesome. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a line, Jason? Ah, just a little. <laughs> Pretty much. And it's the fact that I'm out. I haven't had the time to do that. End of line. Oh, yeah. Um, this is Pathfinder issue one. And that's some of the pages. Lovely. Thank you. Yep. Well, where can people get this? They can get it, I think, at any comic book store. They can get uh, get it digitally through Comixology. They can get it through Paisel's website. They can get it here at Gen Con. Um, yeah. Just let's, see, let's see this finger box. Stay free. Mm -hmm. So, but a, uh, an author's never free. What's your next assignment? After this? Yeah. Uh, just this so far. All right. Yeah, just working on Pathfinders, um, hopefully forever. And if not, then I have to look for another job. So. Hey, what's up? Power. Hello, Roan. Oh, I love that shirt. I have one myself, you know. So I'll get your paper out. So, Russ Brown, tell us hey, what's Russ. new. Oh, uh, it's new? Um, well, I had this role-playing game system that I've been using for one-off games for a couple years with friends and everything, and I thought, what the heck, I'll write it up, I'll put it out there, let other people see what they think about it. So, uh, d6pool.com uh, d6 is the site. There's a forum out there if you want to post ideas, and hopefully I can develop into a community, and this thing can develop into something um, just sort of quick one-off, you know, easy to run, easy to prep kind of game. So that's what it is. It, it brings speed to uh, yeah. It's set up. It's set up for me because I'm usually the game master. So it's all kind of you know bent toward making it easy for me to. Oh, here's an NPC that I got to whip together. It's two seconds to throw a few stats. But um, there's some richness in the game just so that there's some character development. That there's some there's sort of a feat like structure so you can actually break the rules. In order to break rules, you got to have rules. So there's a little bit to it, but. Um, generally, it's there for speed and for hey, we want to just get together. And I got this cool idea for an, for a 
world or a one-off adventure and we gotta quick put something together, so. So are you getting any time to just enjoy yourself or is it all work play? Oh no, I, no, I'm, I just put it out there. It's free, by the way. You just go out to easycool.com. I'm just wandering around and uh, hanging out with friends and stuff, so I'm not doing, we're doing a little bit uh, Diesel Pool in the evenings, but basically, uh, I'll promote it. Um, uh, hey, let's can, promote it. Give that URL again. It's d6pool.com. Uh -huh. so yeah, yeah. Got the, the wacky so, <laughs> yeah. So you're rolling. Hi, I'm Sarah with Game Salute, and we're here at the Peak Peaks booth uh, at, game, or at Gen Con, and <laughs> we are here demoing games that are soon to be published. And I have about 50 to 60 volunteers that I've wrangled here to help show everybody uh, all of the cool new things that Game Salute is doing for uh, publishers and designers out there that want to get their games published. Let's me destroy hapless adventures, warp their morals, and take their dreams. No. So what are you doing, Sir Castillo? Uh, right now I'm trying to get a last minute interview, and then I got Pathfinder Society most of the weekend. Nice. Hmm? Nice. You, you doing any uh, broadcasting from the con? Oh yeah, for sure. I don't have a fancy camera like that, but I do have my pocket recorder. Very nice. Yeah, very powerful actually. It would double as a great MP3 player, but I'm worried about breaking it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Gordon. Hey, you're on film. No, I'm not. This is an yes. illusion. <laughs> yes, you are. Don't believe it. So what are you doing room? here at Gen Con? Just finished running a panel on jamming, and now I get to enjoy the exhibitor hall. How did that go? Pretty damn well, if I do say so myself. Tell me about it. We discussed jamming theory. It's called The Art of the Table, Jamming Beyond the Basics. And it deals with sort of the 200 and 300 level questions for people who've already run a game and have some confidence in the basics of being a GM. Everyone contributed, and we had topics ranging from how do you deal with a player that just wants to tweak out their character to be too powerful, to how do I deal with a player that now wants to only play via Skype after moving away. We had people of all different experience levels, had an absolute blast. Fantastic. And got to present with two of my Iron Contender colleagues. So uh, we all, of course, sized each other up, did a little information gathering. But everyone contributed, had a blast. I believe Dr. Nick is off prepping his own panel right now. And uh, Josh is just enjoying the convention. So just a couple days till I and GM, how you feel? Excited, a little nervous, but mostly just happy to be here and very glad to be competing. Fantastic. You know, this is a, this is a year where the Iron Contenders, they are just on. They're very, very excited and everybody seems pretty amped. Well, I heard from Nick that uh, apparently none of the Iron Contenders have actually taken uh, first place. I'm really hoping we can change that. Tell us about this thing you're running at PAX. Well, I'm running two events. One of them is the same thing I just ran here at Gen Con, The Art of the Table, Jamming Beyond the Basics. The second is called Gaming Grows Up, a discussion of gaming as culture. In the last 20, 30 years, gaming has exploded in popularity. We've got more women in the hobby these days. We've got families gaming together. We've got grandparents and gaming with, gaming with grandkids. Um, and it really can shape someone's identity to say, I'm a gamer, so I'm hoping to discuss what is a gamer, what does it mean when I say that, uh, how has gaming positively influenced the lives that it touches, and how is it continuing to evolve as an aspect of our society. Excellent. Whatever happens down here, happens in the game. Then, on top of that, I can play a red card. So then I play a red card, and again. It's here from Board Game Geek Con. Uh, it'll be released in Essen, uh, the second edition. And we'll have it here in the U.S. The first edition is as possible. What are you going to do? Get the well, you can wear it on formal occasions. You can only wear it with three 
filming a filmer. You're filming a filmer? Somewhere between uh, the world of RPG tabletop and high fantasy Tolkien, there's LFG. It's, a, it's your not quite archetypal adventurers working their way through a fantasy world with parody, with humor, but also with adventure and action. So I'm hot on the heels of its uh, Origin Award win for Best RPG Supplement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're up for Ennies for Best Setting and Product of the Year. Um, Shadows of the Over Scotland is um, a mammoth um, source book for Scotland, 1920s Britain, for Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's half source book and um, half adventures, so you've got a good um, chunk of material to just get going with straight away. Nice. Um, yeah, we're really pleased with this. It's gone down really well. Who are the authors? Uh, Stuart Boone is the oh, author yeah, for this Stuart one. Boone. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's done a great job. But he's so, so good, in fact, that he is now the line developer for our Cthulhu Britannica range. Wow. So, well, well done, Stuart. <laughs> nice. So, what are you looking forward to at Khan? Um, we, it's great to be, we've got the, the Doctor Who card game um, here, which is uh, launching at the show, so that's brand new. It's great to see people get a game, get into grips with that and have a good fun with it. Um, we've got our Primeval game as well, which is dinosaurs and time travel and you know, what could go wrong, basically. It's, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, so Doctor Who, the card game. <laughs> that's the one, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we have had a bit of a challenging first day at the con. Um, our, all of our stock turned up, which is great, but the booth itself didn't. Um, so that's, we're going to be uh, assembling the rest of it tomorrow morning, uh, as you can see from the, uh, the attractive pile of boxes behind us. But uh, now we'll get there. We'll be all pretty for the weekend. Fantastic. There are no territory cards in this version. In this version, what we have are um, faction cards, and the faction cards have similar to stars from the 09 Risk, and I don't know how familiar you are with the 09 version of Risk, the 2009 version. Okay, but, so tell us, what's new in Belisarius? Uh, Belisarius just came out with a new trading card game uh, called Magic with TVs. You build your own racetrack out of the cards, uh, race down the track, just need a six-sided dice, um, it's a brand new game for us, very animated, not like our usual style, uh, little chibi characters, you can buy those separately. Um, all you need is a dice, build your track any way you want it, any configuration, as many cards as you want, pick it up, build it again, little abilities send you back or forward on the track, uh, land on uh, any of the pictures, nothing happens, just a race to the end. Will my friend Sebastian like this game or will he love it? Well, Sebastian will love this game. As far as I know. <laughs> Hi, I'm from Nuco Toys. Uh, we're based out of San Francisco. Uh, we're Silicon Valley's new emerging toy company, bringing uh, physical world goods and toys into the virtual world of tablets, iPads, iPhones, uh, connecting kids as we know that they love uh, playing in that world today. And uh, we've started to do that with a couple of brands, uh, two of which are Animal Planet, which everyone knows, the fun, loving, educational, plenty of uh, animals to choose from. And we have uh, Monsterology, which is from the book series, the Ology series, which was a New York Times bestseller for a long time. Uh, it's been around for about 10 years. Uh, and there's a various uh, uh, number of those, Monsterology, Wizardology, you know, dra uh, Dragonology, Pirateology. So we have a nice line of great um, story arcs to choose from to build in our games. Um, and what we did is basically have uh, an app that you get that's free from the iTunes. So you go up to the store, you can download those for free. Um, and you can get the trading cards from uh, any uh, one of your uh, local stores, uh, hobby stores. Um, or you can go into, we're in big box as well. Um, and literally once you download the games, I can show you right here what the demo looks like. This is um, Animal Planet. Uh, and it's fun, it's something that you can do for the younger kids. Some, uh, if, if, let's say, mom and dad aren't gamers, and uh, children are kind of wanting to explore a little bit, 
you know, you have an iPad or an iPhone or an iPod, this gives you something to, to do, uh, gives them something to learn about. So during school time, let's say, you want to teach them about lions or zebras or flamingos. Well, now you can come into this game. Uh, as you can see right here, we have a spotted hyena that's running. Uh, the graphics are amazing. And there is some background music too that kind of keeps you entertained. Um, with an iPad, we have what's called an accelerometer inside that allows you to turn the animal and yeah, run wow. through. I can either stop him, I lay it flat, you know, or I can um, see a little information about the animal itself. I can touch his name. So here's the video screen of the animal. It gives me a little uh, bit of history on him, it tells me what he likes to eat, it tells me his weight. Really cool facts, so I can use this as an educational purpose. Then I can touch the video screen right there that says the play button and up pops the animal in its natural habitat doing something or if it's a, a flying animal you'll see on my flamingo or birds so that's really kind of neat for parents um, the cool thing about this game as well uh, is you have environment cards so i can change my environment and or i can take a number of the cards from my hand and i can tap them in which is something that's never been done before no codes, no cameras, no anything. I can take my bison card and tap him to the screen and up comes, there he is, the bison wow. I just touched in. And I can double tap the screen to take control of him. I can also see the video on him, read information about him. Um, I can also go over to my display panel and I can go into my library and he's in there. I can go see the other animals that are there. I can choose them from there. Um, I can also change the environment, as I said. Mm -hmm. So if I want to bring in lightning or a monsoon or maybe a tornado, I can go back. I can hit the button to tap in my card. And I tap them in. And there it is. And now there's a tornado. You can see it's dark. And up pops my tornado. Ryan Hoffman. Hey, what are you doing here on Thursday at Con? What's on the schedule? Uh, GURPS, uh, some minis later in the evening, right here with uh, my daughter for one of the kids' games. Smash things. Good what fun. You, what do you do over there? Uh, they give them some time to set up, uh, and then they uh, give them a ball, and they just throw it at it and rake it all to hell. Does so. Gen Con give a, enough things for kids to do, you think, or could they use uh, some more? I'm not sure, actually. It's the first time I brought her, so, you know, it's kind of a learning experience, and, uh, We'll be trying out the daycare on Saturday and see how that works. But uh, yeah, it seemed fun so far. So. Robert Grohler, Dave Ham. How's it going? Tell us about your ambitious new Kickstarter project, The Keep. For oh. We've got a big case to carry just about any game there is. RPGs, board game, card games. In the future, miniatures. Uh, we're looking for a lot of help to get this Kickstarter launched, but uh, we're certain it will be the only case you'll ever need. If you need to mobilize your games, make sure they get there in one piece, every time, undamaged, uh, and organized, ready for play. You know, a lot of people have said, well, you know, I'll just put my games on my shelf, but this is really for people who take their games with them and want to protect them and have them be organized. What, what was the genesis of discovering the need for the key? So for me, it was playing Dominion. Uh, I love that game, I wanted to take it with me everywhere, and expansion after expansion started making the game really quite difficult to move around. So what I ended up doing was creating my own solution for that. Uh, eventually, you know, we put them all into one box, then it got too big for that. I came up with my own DIY solution, I found a case that kind of worked, and then more expansions came out. I had to custom make labels and all that kind of work, so um, that's sort of the genesis where it started. I wanted a case that would work for that, and there's a lot of gamers out there who had done similar things for Dominion, for Arkham Horror, and games like that that are just big, they keep expanding, and you end up not playing, you put all this money into them, but you end up not playing them because you can't take it take it with you everywhere. It just gets really difficult. And at some point in that creation idea, I realized Dominion might not be my favorite game forever, and I said, well, we need something that can house more than just a card game. So uh, we worked on specking that out, I studied hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of board games, hundreds and hundreds of card games, and uh, came up with what we think are pretty much the perfect dimensions to house almost any game out there. Elaborate! <laughs> so I had a house flood in uh, June 2006 and I lost a lot of things including several games. So for me one of the exciting things about this is protection, not just taking it through the rain, going someplace, but 
you know, I have friends that spend thousands of dollars on Magic decks. I've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on my own games. And the thought of leaving them in a basement where they might get damp, you know, what if I'm out of town and I, you know, the, the basement floods? Um, you know, I've already lost thousands of dollars there. I don't need to lose irreplaceable goods, right? You know, a lot of people put, you know, these, these games are more than just, uh, you know, valuables, something they collect, right? This is camaraderie with friends and whatnot. So it kind of transcends just possessions. And we want to do what we can to keep those safe. Okay. I want to rip off you guys. Are you wearing glasses because you already injured yourself? Okay. Can I still get the red right of you again? We'll have to see. Alright, alright, alright. All right. Um. <laughs> yeah, Santa! Steampunk. <laughs> When'd you go steampunk? <laughs>